So I've completely replaced my $7,000 M3 Max MacBook Pro for a $1,000 MacBook Air. And after using it for quite some time now, I'm actually quite surprised. Okay, in this video, I wanna look at a couple things. Is the MacBook Air actually better value compared to the MacBook Pro? Also, can a $1,000 laptop from Apple actually handle my heavy workloads as a full-time content creator, as well as a full-time entrepreneur? And how's my experience switching from the MacBook Pro to the MacBook Air been, and would I recommend it? Starting my day with the M4 Air immediately highlights one of its biggest advantages to me, portability. At just 2.7 pounds, it's almost a full pound lighter than my M3 Max MacBook Pro. And I know on paper it doesn't sound like much, but it, it does feel it. For these morning tasks, like checking investments, reading the news, and planning my day, the M4 Air actually feels faster than my Pro. And I think that's because when it comes to single core performance, this $1,000 laptop actually is 25% faster than the M3 Max. I think Apple has really crushed the single core performance on this new M4 chip. And it's actually more convenient than an iPad because you get the full power of Mac OS while you're using it. There's no workarounds required no compromises required and you pretty much like there's an odd sense of like comfort knowing that you have a computer with you but with the macbook pro it's a little bit heavier it's a little more uh daunting to kind of take with you it's a little bigger thicker but with the macbook air this thing is fantastic it's a great middle ground compromise device but let's go to the studio right now i want to talk a little bit more about um you know performance and how i've been using it and what my experience has been so far let's go tell you that I love you 100 times a day you'll get tired of my voice that's how much I'm gonna tell you that I'll miss you I'll miss you if you go Okay, so I just got to the studio and currently just plugged in the laptop. One quick thing to mention here, we can actually use the new MacBook Air with like double monitors and while the lid is closed, which is uh, an actual upgrade surprisingly. So one of the things that I wanted to actually talk about today was I wanted to see how this MacBook Air actually compares to my MacBook Pro that I've been using for like over a year now in terms of video editing. Now I know what you're thinking, they'll see. If why are you talking about video editing again? Like, I don't know why I always get this comment on like my videos. It's like, does if not everybody's video editing, blah, blah, blah. Okay, I get it. I get you're not video editing, but here's why video editing is probably one of the best metrics to actually test these laptops by in terms of performance. Let me explain. So video editing simultaneously tests your CPU, GPU, RAM, and storage speeds. It requires sustained performance over long periods of time, which reveals any thermal throttling issues. And with the unified memory architecture in Apple Silicon, it shows how efficiently the system actually handles larger files. Now, in my actual experience of using this laptop, the M4 Air has handles a 4K timeline surprisingly well. Where the M3 Max has dual video encoders, the Air just has one. But for my workflow here, I didn't seem to find it to be a bottleneck. Now, I will say that the export times on my Air is quite a bit slower than the Max, but we're talking about like three minutes versus like 1.5 minutes for like a five minute 4K video. So is that worth paying $3,000 more? I mean, it really depends. The thing is for most people, that's not really a big deal. But if you're like me and you are constantly editing and exporting and doing a whole bunch of creative stuff and work over time, these kind of timelines do build up and it does get annoying because sometimes I'm trying to rush out a project. I need to get on to the next thing and I'm just stuck like trying to export something multiple times because I made an error. Then I go back, export again, made an error, go back. Yeah, 
So if you're a video editor, you know what I'm talking about. So let's talk about the elephant in the room, or should I say the lack thereof, because this thing is thin. Let's, let's also take a look at like the MacBook Pro, for example, okay? Like the MacBook Pro by no means is like a thick laptop or anything like that. In terms of performance for actual like chassis and like thinness and lightness, this thing is actually really good because you get a lot out of this computer. But even compared to the MacBook Pro, the MacBook Air seems quite a bit thinner. The MacBook Air comes in at just 0.44 inches thick. But here's the thing that actually surprised me. The MacBook Air doesn't feel cheap or not premium by any means. Like it actually feels really well made. Like the build quality of this is genuinely premium and it feels that way. Aluminium unibody feels solid. There's zero flex in the chassis. Like I actually tried uh, bending it and there's like literally no flex. Like. It, it's quite well made. Maybe I gotta throw it into like Unbox Therapy's back pocket and then it might bend. <laughs> I don't know, if you're old enough to understand that joke, then uh, this, this video deserves a like. <laughs> And the good part is Apple actually has not cut any corners in terms of the components that matter. So the body that we talked about is nice, but also the keyboard feels really nice to use. It's nice and clicky. It's got a really nice tactile feel to it. Uh, the trackpad is really nice. I've always been a huge fan of Apple trackpads. I think they make some of the best trackpads on the market. And all in all, like for the money that you're spending, you don't feel like you're getting like an Air model or anything like that. I think they've really knocked it out of the park with this guy. And one of my favorite features, and I'm glad that they're still able to do this with such a light laptop, is you still have the one finger lift. So, I mean, coming in at just $9.99, this laptop feels like it should cost twice as much as that. So, pretty impressive here in terms of build quality, lightness, and portability, and everything like that. I think Apple has really made a winner here. Now, here's something that not a lot of people actually talk about, and that is the size of like the charging brick. First of all, it packs in real flat against the wall. Uh, it literally just goes flush against the wall, and this is foldable. It's absolutely great for travel, and it comes with two USB-C ports. So I can plug in like my iPhone or something like that as well to charge. And you also get a nice color matched cable. So the entire package with the Air is tiny, not only just the laptop, but even like the actual charging apparatuses. And in terms of the cable, you still get the MagSafe cable here, which is great because you still leave two USB-C ports open for any peripherals that you needed to connect. But look, speaking of ports, I will say having the ports that I have on my MacBook Pro is like super handy, right? With, especially with the SD card port, I don't have to like carry around like dongles or anything around with me and I can just plug in directly to the computer. But with the MacBook Air, because it only has two USB-C ports, I need something for SD cards. I need something in case if I need more ports. So keep that in mind. If you are somebody who needs a lot of different ports, your experience may vary. <laughs> now, one of the big things that Apple did tout with these laptops is AI usage, but I don't think anything compares to what I'm about to show you right now. Trust me, if you are looking to get ahead like in life or in like anything, you absolutely need to check this app out. Guys, if you have decision fatigue like me, this thing is an absolute game changer. Okay, so Claude is another LLM, kind of like ChatGPT, but I frankly actually like this so much better, so much cleaner. I love the UI, the design. I love the way that it responds to me and how it's catering to what I'm looking for. And I had a video that I'm doing and basically I needed to know if something like this could like go into a wall or like what I needed to do. And it would just give me all the answers that I needed or even something as simple as calculating aeroplane miles. So let's say you're trying to fly somewhere, right? I wanted to basically calculate how expensive it would be, like what would be the better deal? So I just took screenshots of everything and I posted it. But hands down my favorite and one of the most powerful ways of using this is to use Opus 4 and hit this research button and this thing is incredible. You can ask it to like literally look through forums. You can ask it to look through like a whole bunch of different stuff. Like for example, here you can see it's gone through literally research from 262 sources in order to pull up the information that I was looking for. Like it shows you all the other sources. Uh, this is like really big brain stuff. So if you're not using stuff like this, like Claude, then I feel like you're just gonna get so behind. AI is inevitably changing a lot of our lives. So why not use it to try to get ahead while we still can? I, I actually use it like pretty much every single day in my life and I can't highly recommend this enough. You can actually use it for free. There's like a free model as well. It'll also make your MacBook like infinitely smarter, <laughs> like infinitely smarter. 
So I ideally wanted to actually go to like a coffee shop or something like that and kind of show different use cases for the laptop because I actually love working outside of the office. I find like anytime I get out of the office and I'm like working at like a coffee shop or some other random place, I find myself to be more productive. I don't know, is this with you guys as well? Let me know in the comment section down below if this is you guys as well. But I look, I already have my cup of tea and uh, it's really nice outside. So I figured, you know what, we'll just work outside. And of course, you gotta have the mandatory uh, YouTube plant. So one of the things that I love about the air is how completely changed like my workflow. Like I'm right now here and I have my entire shot list and everything over here in order to basically go through and like try to like film. And it's like light enough for me to kind of carry around with me throughout the house. Okay, let's talk about the most controversial thing about the new M4 MacBook Airs. And surprisingly, it's not performance. It's nothing else except for color. This is the brand new Hero color this year. This is like the sky blue color that Apple has launched. Both the takes are, one is like, this is pretty much silver and you can't even tell. And, and then there's the other group of thought that says, no, it's actually blue. Like we can tell it's blue. I'm kind of down the middle. When I'm indoors, this thing definitely looks a lot more blue. Um, but when I'm outside right now, like you're looking at this on camera, bro, like this thing pretty much, like I'm looking back at it right now. It looks, it's pretty much silver. Like you can't tell. In the right lighting conditions, this thing does definitely look blue. I like that. And bonus, it definitely hides fingerprints a lot better than space gray. So if you don't like fingerprints, this is a good option as well. Uh, and if you don't want the classic silver that we've had for like generations now, change it up a little bit. I like this guy blue. I think I could get behind this and uh, this would probably be the color I would go with. Okay, but look, this is what I'm gonna say. This is where the MacBook Air really shines. This sort of settings, right? Like I could literally go anywhere and work portable, go around and work in different locations, different coffee shops. You're a student, you're going out to study. Now look, I can't really do a battery life test because I didn't have this plugged into my desktop setup and whatnot. So it does charge up the battery, but I've been using this thing all day. Battery life is absolutely phenomenal. So that combination with the lightness, the weight, the portability, how big the power brick is, and the battery life can fun fundamentally change the way that I work. I find myself actually wanting to go outside and you know, work in different places and different environments and it helps my ADHD quite a bit as well. And it helps me with my procrastination, helps me stay focused. Now, one of my favorite things to do with this actual laptop is basically take it outside and do some photo editing. This thing absolutely crushes in photo editing. And the M4 chip on this thing handles all my Sony footage like a dream, no issues there. Like Photoshop is nice and snappy. Um, and also now that we have 16 gigs standard across the board on all of the M4 Mac, MacBook Airs, it's, it's solid because I can have Lightroom, Photoshop, Final Cut, Calendar, Notion, all of these things open at once and it doesn't really hiccup. Now, one of the things though I will say is I miss the display on my MacBook Pro, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and just say that. I think all displays need to have 120 hertz ProMotion by now. I know this is a laptop, so I'm not as concerned. Like, sure, like phones and stuff like that, an argument can be made, but with this, I think that's the main thing that I miss. Not having that mini LED and not having that ProMotion are probably my, uh, some of my, two of my biggest pain points. But in terms of speakers, the speaker quality on this actually surprised me. It has a six speaker array system and uh, it's not as quite as full as the MacBook Pro, but for a laptop this thin, the audio is actually really good. And having that fanless design just means silence. Like there's no fans running. It's just me, my tea, and uh, perfectly quiet productivity. Okay, it's starting to sunset right now. So I'm gonna start packing up. We'll go back inside and then we'll conclude in the studio. Okay, so let's kind of reel this all in a little bit, okay? I just got back into the studio and look, let's get real here. When we're talking about performance, okay, that's one of the main things people kind of want to know between my MacBook Pro and my MacBook Air. What has my experience been? Look, the M3 Max is gonna destroy the M4 Air in terms of multi-core performance and multi-core benchmarks. It's like 21,000 versus 15,000 in Geekbench. It's, it's, it's a noticeable difference, okay? But let's be real, like 95% of the population is probably not doing that. And for even, you know, majority of basic video editing, 4K timelines and everything like that, you're gonna be good with the air. And even with myself, if I break down like how I'm actually using this computer, like pretty much 80% of my day 
it's gonna be perfectly fine with the MacBook Air, like traveling, kind of moving around, commuting, whatnot. The Air handles all of that perfectly. Now, where I did notice the difference was when I was doing sustained workload. So I'm editing for like longer periods of time. And, you know, after 20 minutes of like heavy video editing and processing, then definitely the Air starts to throttle a little bit and you'll notice a little bit of, you know, uh, performance dips here and there. And that's done in order to maintain the thermals because there's no fan to actually cool down down the system and versus with my pro it's just gonna fire up the fans and it's gonna keep going the standby time for battery life on my macbook pro like without me using it and just kind of sleeping i'm losing like five to eight percent overnight versus with my macbook air it was like one or two percent like something like absurd like i didn't see it go down at all so the efficiency gains with the macbook air is actually quite remarkable so that's another thing to keep in mind so here's my final verdict and who should buy what 90 percent of the people out there are just looking for a basic workhorse computer that is easy on the wallet easy on the eyes and you can take around with you and you know anytime you pick it up it's a reliable machine that will work for years to come and i think that's exactly what the macbook air is and in terms of the specs now if you go on the website you'll see a couple different models and the one that i would recommend is not the entry level one the middle one here will give you the 10 core cpu the 10 core gpu 16 gigs of unified memory and 512 gigs of ssd storage and you do get the upgraded 35 watt charger which i also really like so for 200 bucks more you do get quite a bit of bang for buck here and at the end of the day you're still paying less than than half of what the M3 Pro costs, not even the M3 Max. So uh, yeah, for $11.99, I think that's a good deal. Students, business professionals, photographers, or even YouTubers and video editors like myself, I mean, people who have desktops and stuff like that, I think the MacBook Air is a solid option. And between these two, I think it is the smarter option. And that's the one that I would push most people towards. In a world where we're like trained to go pro everything, like everything has to be pro models, I think the Air kind of just reminds us that sometimes you just, the best tool is something that just gets out of your way and lets you focus on what actually matters and getting the things done. like the laptop basically laptoping. But yeah, I think for $9.99, this is probably one of the best laptops I could recommend on the market that's a Mac. But in any case, let me know in the comment section down below. I'm curious, are you team Air or are you team Pro? Until then, that thumbs up down below really helps. Subscribe to the channel and I'll see you guys in the next one. Or if you want more of me, you can check out one of these two videos over here. Peace.